We believe HPN is a great attempt at designing new network architecture and would be a standard for constructing large-scale GPU clusters. Hello everyone, this is Kun Qian from Alibaba Cloud. I'm excited to present Alibaba HPN, a new network architecture specifically for the LLMM training. HPN has been largely deployed in Alibaba Cloud for around a year. It supports the interconnections of tens of thousands of GPUs and delivers excellent performance for thousands of model training jobs from many customers. Why we need a brand new network architecture? Let's start with the features of traffic pattern. In our production, general cloud computing generates millions of flows and traffic utilization generally stay below 20%. The overall traffic pattern is relatively continuous and steady. On the contrary, the LM training generates very few but periodically bursty flows, as shown in the figure. The bursts can reach the maximum NIC capacity, which is 400 gigabits per second. Therefore, maximum bandwidth utilization in LM training is crucial. A general cloud computing instance typically generates hundreds of thousands of connections on the contrary, each node in the LLM training generates only a few dozens of connections. It makes load balance even harder. Second, LLM training is more sensitive to failures. Multiple GPUs cooperate for dozens of days to complete the entire training process. A failure on any GPU or host would crush the entire training process. In our production, each month, 0.057 percentage of links fail. In each month, 0.051 percentage of switches encounter critical errors and crashes. Such a failure ratio brings non-negligible harm to LM training reliability. In commodity data center, the three-tier clause is the most widely used topology, which intrinsically introduces two limitations. First, it employs ECMP as the load balancing scheme. ECMP assumes that the number of flows is big enough so that the hash algorithm can effectively distribute the traffic evenly across equivalent passes. This assumption is true on the general cloud computing. However, it is no longer valid for LM training. After multiple times of hashing, hash polarization would lead to severe load imbalance. Furthermore, eliminating the root cause of failure is challenging. While the tier 2 and tier 3 layer have abundant redundant links, each NIC connects to the tor via a single link, posing a single point failure risk. A tor failure can make dozens or even hundreds of hosts unavailable, leading to severe service quality degradation. Based on the unique characteristics of LLM training, we decide to build a new network architecture. It should meet the following goals. The first goal is scalability. The figure shows that the number of GPUs required by a single training job is in production is less than 3,000. To accommodate the requirement evolution in the coming future, we set the primary capacity goal of containing 15,000 GPUs. Consider it the far, far future requirement. Our additional capacity goal is to support 100,000 of GPUs. The second goal is performance. To enhance performance, our design should minimize network hopes as much as possible. Reducing the number of hopes lower latencies and decreases the time of ECMP hashing making the path selection scheme more precise. The third goal is reliability. Our solution should fundamentally avoid the failure of single tor at the topology level. In traditional data center networks, two ports of each NIC are aggregated through one cable connecting to the tor switch, calling the single tor design. Single tor is vulnerable to switch or link failures, significantly affecting the LM training. To eliminate the root cause of failure, we decide to construct a non-stacked dual-tor design, as shown in the figure. 
two independent tools work as a bond for each link. To synchronize these two tools, we make a series of modifications. First, we add an ARP broadcast module on each host to update ARP information concurrently to two different tools. Furthermore, we employ configurable LACP and converting ARP to host routes, which are inherently supported by vendors in the Ethernet community. Therefore, this design minimizes implementation complexity, significantly benefiting our production scale deployment. In addition, we leverage BGP for the intersegment routing. When the NIC to tall link fails, the corresponding ARP item will be withdrawn by the switch, as well as the corresponding host route, triggering the update of BGP. Therefore, the routing could converge to transmit traffic through TOR2. Next, let's consider how to build the Tier 1 network of HPN. The bandwidth capacity of the TOR directly determines the scale of the Tier 1 network. We employ the latest 51.2 terabytes per second Ethernet single chip switch in HPN. But why choose the single chip switch, especially considering that multi chip switches could support higher bandwidth capacity? Our long term experience in operating data center networks reveal that multi chip switches introduce more stability risks. Specifically, our operational single-chip switches outnumber multi-chip switches by 32 times. On the contrary, the total number of critical hardware failures in multi-chip switches is 3.77 times higher than that in single-chip switches. Another design choice in the Tier 1 network is the real optimized topology. The de facto configuration of host is that 8 GPUs inside the same host are connected with a high bandwidth intra-host network, like NVLink. Although the intra-host network bandwidth varies on the different types of GPUs, it is four to nine times greater than that of NIC bandwidth. To fully leverage the different forwarding capacity, we deploy the real optimized network. In a real optimized network, NICs in the same rail are connected through the same set of dual tor switches. NICs in different rails are communicated via a combination of intra-host and inter-host forwarding. Here, let's briefly review the topology in a segment. Two ports of each NIC are connected to different tors, and different NICs on the same host are connected to different rails. As a result, each segment covers the interconnection of 1,000 GPUs. With dual tool in Tier 1 network, if we simply deploy a typical class topology between tool and aggregation, hash polarization would still exist. In the downstream direction, owing to the dual tool, there is a high convergence of traffic from 60 aggregation switches to two tool switches, leading to significant performance degradation. Therefore, we propose the dual plan design. Tall switches are categorized into two separate groups. With this design, once a flow enters the uplink of a tall, its forwarding path inside the port is completely determined. Therefore, hash polarization is eliminated in the port. Thanks to the dual plan design, when searching disjoint passes for optimal path allocation, we only need to search the links in each tall switches, significantly decreasing the time consumption. This table illustrates the calculation cost on the different network architectures. HPN can greatly decrease the computation complexity by one to two magnitude. After deploying the dual plan design, as shown in the figure, the ingress traffic of different ports becomes even the queue length as the tall downstream ports decreases by 91%. Through employing dual plan in the tier 2 network, the entire architecture of a port is shown in the figure. This table summarizes key mechanisms in HPN that contribute to expanding the network scale. With the dual tall and real optimized design, a single segment can cover 1,000 GPUs. 
with dual plan and the aggregation to call over subscription. HPN supports 15,000 GPUs in one port. Recalling the scale of tasks in production, a port covers 100% of the training jobs we have served to date. Furthermore, to meet the long-term planning for supporting more GPUs, we have also designed the Tier 3 network connecting multiple ports. In HPN, each host equips with an additional NIC for front-end network access, and we design an independent front-end network. We evaluate the training performance of three representative models under more than 400 GPUs. By employing HPN, the end-to-end -end perform training performance is improved by 6% to 14%. We further conduct experiments showing the reliability of HPN. As shown in the figure, a link failure occurs and the training halts immediately in the single tor topology. As a country with dual tor, the failure of a single link only causes six percentage of performance degradation. This figure shows the impact of link flapping. In single tor, the temporary link flapping halts the training for more than nine seconds. In dual tor, the performance degradation is negligible. We believe HPN is a great attempt at designing new network architecture and would be a standard for constructing large-scale GPU clusters. Thank you for listening.